Student outcomes should inform teaching practices and immediate instructional adjustments can be based on a number of assessment techniques, including formal assessment, student self-assessment, or even classroom assessment. By gathering data or evidence on student learning, instructors can analyze that evidence to determine whether students are on track to meet learning outcomes, and if not, determine how to change teaching strategies and approaches to enhance student learning. I'll be your presenter today. My name is Amanda Smothers. I am the teaching and learning coordinator and temporarily sharing responsibilities of the online learning coordinator in the Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning at NIU. Um, as I mentioned, I'll be taking questions throughout and at the end of the presentation. So if you have specific questions related to what we're covering during the presentation, just feel free to post them to the chat thread, uh, or you can raise your hand if you prefer to use your mic, and I can address those questions as they come up. So let's get to know each other. Um, in the text chat, just tell us what your department or division is, what's your role, um, and explain what you hope to get out of this workshop. Great, thanks Candace. Candace is a Spanish instructor in the Department of World Languages and Literature is looking to see what ideas um, I might have to share. Great, thanks for joining. And Bill teaches piano and chamber music and hopes to modify teaching based on outcomes. Excellent. And Jen is in kinesiology and phys ed, looking for new tips to incorporate into classes to keep them fresh. Excellent. Thank you all for joining today. Um, one thing that I'd like to do in my online synchronous classes is just to do a, a little bit of a check-in at the beginning. How are you today with just an emoji? And that gets students participating, um, make sure that they're paying attention to, um, and it gives us some information about where students are at. So, you know, if someone's not doing so well and they share maybe a negative emoji, then you might know why they're not as participatory in that class session, perhaps, um, and you might give them different ways to participate. Um, so you can click on the little emoji icon, um, and if you hover over it, it'll say select emoticon. You can search for emojis if you're looking for something specific, or you can just scroll through. So find an emoji that um, just kind of represents how you are today at this moment and share that in the chat. Some thumbs up. So this is a good low stakes way to get some information about students at the beginning of a class session uh, and fun for them too. They get to be a little bit creative and in, in finding what emoji represents um, how they're doing at that moment in time. So our workshop goals. Um, in this workshop, we're going to learn how and when to assess student learning, um, how to use uh, assessment data to determine when to make changes to instructional approaches, and how to decide what kinds of changes will be most effective as well. So the importance of monitoring student learning. Monitoring student learning is an essential component of high quality education. And monitoring student progress is proven in educational research literature to be a big factor that differentiates effective teachers from ineffective ones. And it's also a predictor of student achievement. What does it mean, though, to monitor student learning? 
In this context, it means to scrutinize student learning systematically with a view to collecting specific kinds of data. In addition, it is connected to record keeping, to reporting, and to decision making. All right, so outputs versus outcomes. Outputs are not outcomes, and it can be easy to confuse the two outputs and, and outcomes. Outputs can be learning plans or data, but they don't alone indicate whether educators have accomplished their goals. Outcomes, on the other hand, involves progress or success in achieving instructional goals. So for example, um, changing instructional practices with a view towards improving student achievement. One question to ask when determining outcomes, what changes in knowledge, skills, practices, and student learning will show progress towards our learning goals. Identify specific changes to instructional practice and student performance to look for as you move toward achieving those goals. We can and, and should consider both quantitative and qualitative data to get a comprehensive view of student and educator progress. So let's talk about some different uh, ways that we can assess or different points during the semester that we can assess student learning. Outcomes. So once we've created our goals for ourselves um, and for our student learning, we need to determine how we will gauge progress and make adjustments to instruction to improve student learning. Make the process of gauging progress towards goals more manageable, we should create benchmarks toward that ultimate end goal that we have in mind. Based on those benchmark indicators, we should periodically assess student progress towards our learning outcomes. So for example, we could examine informal um, formative assessment data on a weekly basis to gauge student progress towards outcomes. Look for evidence that students are learning to compile that data to support any claims that we want to make about the impact of our instructional practices on students' learning. After gathering our data based on that regular formative classroom assessment, then we should make adjustments to our instructional approaches based on progress that we do or don't see, identify the knowledge and skills that we need to improve, both in our instruction and in students' learning. If our instructional practices have changed, but students don't progress or improve, then we need to adjust our approaches accordingly as well. Another way that we can assess student um, learning is to employ students themselves in tracking their own learning and progress toward outcomes by using self-assessment methods. The different self-assessment methods that you could use will vary based on your subject matter. But this could help save us some time when assessing students' progress towards learning outcomes and goals during learning activities and formative assessments. Um, so we don't always have to be the one collecting data. We can use students to collect data on themselves too. So to make the most out of our students' self-assessment, we want to provide students with clear metrics a rubric or another guided self-assessment activity or document to make sure that they provide the kind of information or data that we need for our assessment of their learning progress. So again, that's going to vary based on, you know, what learning outcome measuring, what kinds of activities you have in your class, um, when it's appropriate to have students assess themselves and their progress, um, and uh, what your instructional practices are. So the thing that we probably think about the most when we talk about students' outcome assessment is formal assessment, the summative assessment. Using formative assessment to gauge whether students are on track to meet learning outcomes is essential to providing those just-in-time teaching adjustments. Um, but also important is formal or summative assessment. Summative assessment or formal assessment is when we can answer the question, other student learning has actually, in the end, led to achievement of learning outcomes. So we've already set goals that we intend to reach as educators and created a roadmap of how we want to get there. We want to determine whether those instructional strategies in that roadmap that we created have worked to support learning.
we need to gather, gather data on summative assessment to determine what worked, what didn't work, um, and you know that that assessment is going to reveal did students uh, achieve the learning outcomes? Did they um, master those learning outcomes? If they didn't, then we need to kind of go back and figure out what might have gone wrong. And this might, you know, different students might have achieved those learning outcomes. Some might not have. But how can we bring everyone up to speed? And we can determine once we've we've looked at the summative assessment data, um, we can determine how we want to proceed. Do we need to change our instructional approaches? If so, how should we do that? How can we move forward, support student learning, and help students achieve those learning goals that were not met in this round of assessment? So we don't just want to move on and leave the students who haven't met those learning outcomes behind. We want to address those students who um, were served by our instructional practices to meet those learning outcomes. We want to bring everybody up to, um, to speed on that. So determining when to adjust instructional approaches. Educators need to understand that our students needs, we need to understand our students needs before we can determine how we need to grow and learn from our own experiences. So if we have specific gaps between student outcomes and student achievement in mind, so like we've taught this class before, um, we know that there are you know, these gaps between student outcomes and student achievement, then we can better identify the knowledge and skills that we need to develop so that we can better serve students' learning needs. That's why having goals in mind first and then choosing instructional strategies to meet those goals. And then finally, assessing students' progress throughout the learning experience toward achieving learning outcomes is essential to assessing our own instructional approaches. If we have a goal setting process in place, that identifies student learning targets, we monitor student learning progress, and we can identify our students learning needs. And then in turn, this will help us see where our instructional approaches are supporting students learning needs and helping them progress, uh, progress toward mastery of targeted learning outcomes. And then where our instructional approaches may not be supporting students learning needs. Um, and helping them progress towards mastery of student learning or of tar our targeted learning outcomes. Uh, Candice, do you have a question? Um, I do. So you're talking about, you're, you're, you're trying to say that when there's a gap between what you see your students are able to do versus when you keep saying student outcomes versus student achievement, you don't mean the outcomes that this student has you mean like the the standard outcome that you want the student to you're saying like where they should be versus did they just fail a quiz right. is that what you're trying to say by student outcomes versus student achievement because when you're saying student outcomes versus student achievement i'm like that well doesn't isn't that the same thing but by student outcomes you mean what the outcomes are supposed to be I'm yeah to so where they're supposed to be versus, yeah where they're supposed to be versus where they're at okay all right, thank you. A gap between those two places. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, if you have any questions when I'm, you know, saying things, if anything's unclear, please, Candace did, and raise your hand or post it to the chat, and I will definitely clarify that. I don't want anybody to be confused. Um, so to decide when we need to adjust our instructional approaches, we need to be assessing student learning every step of the way. Um, as I mentioned, both through formative, assessment or assessments, you know, those smaller assessments, informal assessments, and then summative or formal assessment as well. Um, and we want to be making adjustments or tweaks to our instructional pro approaches whenever we see that students aren't progressing or maybe aren't making as much progress as we want them to towards the goals that we've set, the learning goals that we've set. Um, we do just a little bit of a ca caveat, excuse me, we do need to be careful not to approach um, kind of assessment through a deficit mindset. In other words, seeing students as somehow deficient, um, but rather we want to use a growth mindset. We want to see students' potential and examine how we need to change our approaches to help them reach that potential. 
So if students are quote unquote failing to reach our goalposts that we set, we need to look at what we're doing or maybe not doing to help students achieve those learning goals and what we're doing that may not be serving individual students' learning needs as well. Um, so using assessment data to inform instructional changes. Once you've gathered data um, and determined that you need to adjust your teaching approach, how can you use that data to inform your, those instructional changes? Um, using data to inform instructional change requires some deliberate analysis and reflection to determine what has worked and what hasn't worked for student learning and what changes we might need to make in the future or more immediately to improve student learning outcomes and to reach um, our instructional goals. So the learning goals that we establish at the beginning of our process are going to determine what questions should guide our evaluation of our instructional approaches. So our questions will be individualized. They'll be based on our own personal stated outcomes, learning goals, instructional approaches. So the ultimate question is what instructional changes would improve for students' learning results? Um, another important but difficult component to using assessment data to inform instructional changes is determining which instructional approaches need actually to be changed. Um, one way to determine this is by making changes to instructional practices with your goals in mind before the semester or unit begins based on data you already have. So prior semester student learning um, outcomes and achievement, for example. And then you can determine whether those changes have had a positive effect on student learning by comparing the data between semesters. Um, and if not, you can make further adjustments after looking at your assessment data. Another strategy for using assessment data to inform instructional change is by um, extrapolating from that data where students' learning needs are greatest. So which learning outcomes are they struggling with? What of your instructional approaches in, is intended to align with those outcomes? Uh, if you've aligned your learning outcomes, your instructional approaches, your learning materials, and your assessments, you'll be better able to determine where in that chain is sort of the weak link uh, that you can repair it by finding maybe a more effective approach to support student learning for the outcome. Um, so keep in mind that changes to instructional approaches that don't actually lead to improved student learning aren't contributing to our ultimate goal. So we, we don't want to cling to ineffective instructional approaches or just change things just to change things. We want to change things with that ultimate goal in mind. Um, changes to student learning, conversely, without those clearly defined changes in instructional approaches aren't provide, isn't providing us with evidence of instructional effectiveness either. So you know, if we don't change anything and you know, this semester they, our students this semester actually you know, edit or do better than last semester, um, that's not evidence of our instructional effectiveness. Um, it's more telling us about our students. Um, so that's why we need to be continually assessing uh, our own instructional approaches based on the information that we have that semester about our students and, and our progress towards learning goals um, and towards mastery of our, our learning outcomes. Um, because you know, each semester we, we might have to, to tweak things in different ways to reach the students that we have in front of us. So, um, the relationship between instruction and student outcomes. Uh, so in a white, pa white paper titled Unpacking Relationships, Instruction, and Student Outcomes from 2016, uh, Natasha Jankowski analyzes the relationships between clearly articulated performance expe expectations and instructional approaches that enhance student attainment of learning outcomes. Um, and Jankowski concludes that the more students engage in their learning environment, uh, unsurprisingly, the more likely they are to be successful and satisfied with their learning experience. In addition, evidence-based practices, um, pedagogical practices, are effective, unsurprisingly also. But unfortunately, they're not be used, being used widely in actual teaching practice, which is an issue. Um, and so that might be a place also to start is looking at um, pe the pedagogy, looking at what those evidence-based practices are and seeing where 
your instructional practice or your instructional strategies might line up with those or might not line up with those and use those as a, sp as a starting point for adjusting our instructional practices. Jankowski explores five areas of intersection between instructional approaches and student outcomes in her white paper. These include transparency, logical approaches, assessment, self-regulation, alignment, and she also explains that faculty, particularly contingent faculty, which we do have at NIU, uh, but they need to be equipped with the pedagogical skills and techniques necessary to support students' academic achievement through you know, professional development, for example. Um, so, and I think that we can add, um, in addition to, she speaks particularly about contingent faculty, but um, you know, we can also maybe put um, graduate assistants who teach our instructors of record and teaching classes in there as well. So we need to equip uh, all of our faculty, including graduate assistants, contingent faculty, with those pedagogical skills and techniques necessary to support students' academic achievement. Um, additionally, American Council of Education points out that, um, quote, given the research about the barriers first-generation students and those from under-resourced communities and schools face in completing credentials and degrees. It's likely more student-centered, attainment-focused instructional approaches will have a disproportionately large and positive impact on students from underserved communities. Um, so this aligns with our institutional goal of, of serving first-generation uh, students and those from under-resourced communities and schools as well. Um, so again, you know, student-centered, attainment-focused instructional approaches are going to have uh, a large and positive impact on not only all students, but um, especially students from underserved communities. Um, and that leads us to our next topic as well, which is equity in assessment. And I just wanted to touch on this briefly. Um, so this isn't really about um, you know, necessarily a, adjusting based on student outcomes, but looking at uh, the data a little bit more closely uh, with an equity-minded lens. So according to uh, the National Institute for Learning Outcomes Assessment, equity-minded assessment entails the following actions. One, you want to check biases and ask reflective questions throughout the assessment process to address assumptions and positions of privilege. Two, we want to use multiple sources of evidence appropriate for the students being assessed and assessment effort. Third, include student perspectives and take action based on those perspectives. Fifth, increase transparency in assessment results and the actions that we take based on those results. Fourth, ensure collected data can be meaningfully disaggregated and interrogated. Um, so we want to look at um, you know, the data in a way that reveals potential equity issues, equity gaps. Uh, and finally, we want to make evidence-based changes that address issues of equity that are context-specific. So ultimately, what this all means is that for assessment to improve student learning, and authentically document what students know and can do for today's uh, diverse students, an equitable and culturally responsive approach to assessment is needed. So we want to keep equity in mind as we develop and evaluate our assessment practices and our instructional approaches. So I just have some questions for consideration, and these aren't questions that I'm expecting you to answer right now, but just to think about as you, you know, examine your own instructional practices um, and look at aligning your instructional practices with learning outcomes, um, and learning activities and materials. So what are your goals for this course or these courses in the current or in the next semester that you teach it? What are that course is learning outcomes. You want to identify those, the, the things that students need to be able to, to do um, by the end of that semester of the course. And have you intentionally aligned your instructional approaches, including learning materials, activities, and assessments to your learning outcomes? 
to identify any changes that you need to, be, to make to better align those instructional approaches to learning outcomes. So if you find that there's maybe some misalignment, what can you do to better align those things? Um, and be intentional about our instructional approaches. Make sure that they are specifically addressing our learning outcomes. Um, another question to think about is, have you identified learning outcomes with which students have had difficulties in the past in this course? Um, and we maybe don't want to um, put too much um, importance on one specific iteration of the course or one one class of the course, but are there patterns? Have you noticed patterns of students having difficulties with specific outcomes um, over time? And that might give us a clue into whether uh, there are adjustments that we need to make. Uh, and then finally, which instructional approaches are aligned with those outcomes and how could we adjust our strategies to support student mastery of those targeted learning objectives? So those are just a few questions for consideration. I'm just going to pause for a minute to let you kind of read over them again and think about them for your own practice. Okay, so and I will send this uh, recording of this workshop um, to everyone who's attending today um, so that you have it. If you want to come back to any of these questions, you'll have, have the, the link to the recording. Candice? Um, Amanda, I'm going to try to articulate a question, a kind of like a need that people in, in my department would have. and and just to ask you to to think about it and if if you're aware of any research or have i or can or come across ideas that are floating around out there if anybody's thinking or talking about this um in my mm -hmm. department students are having to master a skill which i think is probably going to align very well with what bill teaches also i'm not sure about jen um, but in my department, like the, the students are having to, they're learning another language, they're, they need to be, there, there are definite, um, there are definite and measurable skills, like can you conjugate these verbs? Do you know what these words mean, right? And so that they have to master these fundamental the, the fundamental grammar, right? Like the the and fundamental vocabulary. Like they they literally have to know these words. They have to know how to do these certain combinations and manipulations, in order mm -hmm. to be able to have the outcomes of performance that we need. And in in today's increasingly tech society, our students we we find semester after semester that they've become more and more accustomed to manipulating other people's knowledge rather than creating their own knowledge. Like they think, they think if they can put something in Google Translate, that's the same thing. And they don't realize until they, they have to take four semesters with us. They, some of them don't realize till their second or the beginning of their third semester how much they've been sabotaging themselves by 
by taking all these little shortcuts instead of amassing their own knowledge base so that they can mm -hmm. so that their performance can grow. And if, if right. you have any, you know, if you know of any ways people have been handling that in other places, we'd really be open to listening. <laughs> yeah, I will, I will do some research on that. Um, specifically, I think that's definitely a common, common issue. Um, particularly, as you mentioned, in like languages and uh, music yeah, I don't, and, and I don't know how like it that. goes. I mean, I, I would hope that by the time students get to the level of having Bill teach them piano, they're better motivated than my 15 year old with her clarinet. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> but, but in, in as far as Spanish classes go, holy Hannah, these guys actually need to like sit down and do something outside of the hour that they spend with me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. It makes total sense. So yeah, I will, I will do some some digging and do some research, and in my follow up email, I will give you whatever I find on that. Um, you know, whether great. it's Thank you. motivating students or you know techniques, strategies, anything that I can find on that. Well, especially what you were saying about like for the students to assess themselves, right? To see yeah. because it's one thing for them to. You know, they sit there and they think they're understanding because I'm pretty darn good at explaining this kind of stuff. But if you don't actually <laughs> go then and do it, then when you come back, right. you're going to just be like, well, how come I can't do it? Well, well, you didn't actually do it, you know? So, right. uh, yeah. So anything that you can find in those fields or, or, or some suggestions you have as to ways, other ways that we could give them for self-assessment would be helpful too. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I'm just writing some notes for myself so that I can get that information for you. Yeah, anything that, that you have to share would be would be appreciated. Yes, definitely. I will, I will find that information for you. Yeah, Thanks, I mean, when we're, yeah, you're welcome. When you were talking about, you know, students using Google and thinking that, that, you know, I do placement reading for a community college for English writing and just a couple of the students deal with technology and the number of students who think that uh, technology and education, number of students who think that, you know, technology has improved education because you can just look anything up online is, is funny but not funny because that's, that's a real problem um, that they think that because they can Google it, that they know it. Um, yeah, and they, 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 seem to have a, they seem to have a, I need to get this assignment turned in attitude as opposed mm -hmm. to this assignment is a tool to help me learn how to do right. this. Yeah. Exactly. Not seeing the value of um, a formative assessment um, towards, you know, helping them prepare for, you know, what's come. Um, seeing it as more of like a points grab which I see too, in, even in writing classes is, you know, oh, I, I need to get the points for this. Um, and stuff, this is meant to help me. And they, they see, they recognize it more, you know, I have my students reflect at the end of the semester, you know, what advice would you give to a student, um, you know, next semester students coming into this class. And a lot of times they say, well, I would tell them to do the pre-writing and do the, you know, do those smaller assignments because looking back, I recognize that if I had done those, it would have been so much easier writing that essay or, you know, doing that project. So, you know, mm -hmm. reflection, I think, too, might be a good tool um, to use. It's worked for me, at least in hindsight. Um, okay, so, yeah, so I will, um, I will do some research on that and I will get you some resources uh, and some strategies for that too. Um, any other questions or, or anybody else need, want me to find any information for them or specific to, you know, your discipline? All right, so I have just a few questions for discussion um, and you can, you know, pop these in the chat if you want, or you can answer them for yourself, or you can, you know, turn on your mic if you want to answer them for everybody. 
Um, but just what, what are some things that you think you can take away from this workshop that you could use to improve student learning in your courses? Um, how do you plan to use student outcomes assessment to improve your teaching approaches? Do you have you know, any ideas in mind? Um, and then what concerns do you have with adjusting your teaching approaches? So I'll give you a few minutes just to, to think about these and contribute if you want to. Um, you know, if you're still thinking about it, that's totally fine. You don't have to have to contribute anything at this time, but I'll give you just a couple minutes to, to think about it and to contribute some ideas if you want to. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Candace. So Candace says, shares that last semester they moved to a more performance-based midterm and final versus the traditional measure how well you can do the grammar and vocab uh, tasks chapter quizzes. Um, and it didn't work out the way that they thought. They they need they found the students needed that accountability of those chapter exams to gauge their skill level. So they brought them back, kept the performance-oriented midterm and final which is great. So it's kind of sort of like giving students multiple ways to demonstrate their, um, their uh, bills that at the end of each semester, students play short performances called juries, which are outcomes that can reveal any recurring problems that need a change in teaching. Great. Thank you both for sharing. Uh, lots of work, yeah. Same battle of trying to affect change and what students are doing when they're when they're not with you. Yeah. So how do we how do we motivate students to uh, be kind of self motivated and to take uh, ownership of their learning as well? Difficult task. Any thoughts? Great. So I have a list of some resources um, that I'm going to share with you um, in my follow-up email, but I have one on evaluating professional learning, measure, measuring educator and student outcomes, um, improving student outcomes through professional development, um, the in-between, what's needed to improve student outcomes, monitoring student learning in the classroom, um, the National Institute for Learning Outcomes Assessments uh, page on equity and assessment um, and a, a page on the outcomes approach, 
um, seeking better student outcomes start with improving instructional quality, um, which is from um, the Higher Education Day blog. Student outcomes assessed among the new non-tenure track faculty majority um, and writing and assessing student learning outcomes um, from IUPUI Center for Teacher uh, Teaching and Learning. So I'll send those links to you um, in addition to information that I find that was requested. Um, any last questions in the last uh, uh, minutes of time that we have together today? All right. Well, if you think of anything, feel free to contact me. Um, and thank you so much for joining me today to talk about adjusting teaching approaches based on student outcomes. Um, again, if you have any questions um, or need any further information or want me to look for um, more strategies for you, feel free to contact me at any time in my, my NIU email. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.